Well, our, our guys played hard uh, on both sides of the football and the special teams area was a good win for us. Okay, Nick, right off. You were committed to Cornell as a lineback. Yes. Was this one a little extra special for you? Uh, it's not something I think about a lot, uh, but it does feel good looking back, knowing uh, I think I made the right decision. Even on top of that, your first game match to Dartmouth was in the Cornell game a few years ago. The loss does it feel extra fitting, I guess, to have this kind of performance against them now? It does. You know, we, uh, I was, you know, two years, that's a long time ago. We, uh, we, this is a new season, a new team. Uh, we came out and took care of business, and it feels great to win. 172 yards, four touchdowns, a bunch of junk plays. What are you seeing out there? How you keep finding your way to this? The offensive line, the tight ends, the running backs, and the receivers. The, everything, credit to them. Those guys played their butts off. Uh, blocking incredibly well, blocking incredibly hard, and they make my job so easy, week in, week out. I love those guys, all the work they put, they put in. It, it's, it's awesome. Was you feeling 75 yards up? I saw it open up, and I was like, oh man, this is a long way to go. Uh, <laughs> so just, you know, I, that was one of those plays that our guys up front executed perfectly. They gave us the look we wanted. Uh, it is, it's an awesome feeling when you see that open and you just hit it. Uh, unfortunately, I got I got ran down, but uh, we were able to punch it in. So it was, it was a great feeling, uh, and we scored. Came away with the score. That's all that really matters. 181 total yards. Talk about the, the way the defense plays tonight. Uh, defense came out um, strong. Uh, you know, we, we had a great game plan coming in. Um, and we knew that from the beginning, it started at practice this week. We knew that we wanted to bounce back from that two years ago. You know, we wanted to you know, look at it, but we wanted to move forward and, you know, just keep that in the back of our minds. And, uh, you know, we came out, executed our game plan, and uh, the results showed. How's this defense seemingly gotten stronger and stronger every year? Uh, yeah, that's a great question. Uh, it's, you know, we haven't reached our max potential yet, and like you know, we're, we're getting better game by game, and uh, you know, we just know that if we come out and we play to our best, we are the best. You know, we can't. No offense can run the ball, pass the ball on us. If we execute the game plan, Coach Dobe sets out for us, and we you know we come out firing off the ball. Is there anything in particular that's kind of leading to that gradual improvement? Is it? Yeah, you know, but uh, yeah, we feed off of each other, and we feed off of every week. Um, you know, as the season comes, you know, closer, closer to the end in that championship game, uh, you know, we just want to focus in every week, get better every day. Um, you know, we emphasize at practice. You know, it starts at practice with the scout guys giving us great looks, and um, you know, staying healthy is the main main part of that too. So. Fun you all having out there with the defense playing the way it is right now. It's fun, uh, you know. Kind of, you kind of forget that you're you're out there playing D1 football because um, it's just, you know it's fun. Um, the guys flying around, you know, it just feels like, you know, it just feels like some guys just playing football, you know. <laughs> you guys talked about avoiding uh, sort of a letdown game this week, like uh, happened two years ago. What's the mindset now? Mindset, uh, you know, stay focused on the goal and the task. Um, this whole year, we've been leading up to this this opportunity, and we set ourselves up for this opportunity. And we don't. We just gotta capitalize. Thank you. Ever had four rushing touchdowns in a game before? I have not. This is uh, this is a first. Uh, feels good. Uh, again, credit to the offensive line, the running backs, tight ends, receivers, and the defense. You know, we feed off their energy as much as we feed off our own. Uh, when you're playing with guys like that, I think just as a team, we're continuing to come together. We've always been close, but, uh, you know, I love these guys, and we're just going to, you know, we got one more week to, to play our hearts out, and, you know, we put ourselves in a great position, so I'm excited to see what happens. Nick, I don't want to be a dead horse, a dead horse, but can you talk a little bit about the decision to back off of 
how long were you committed to them mm -hmm. and what made the decision? So I had decommitted from the University of South Dakota, uh, decided I wanted to go to Cornell. Um, it seemed just at the time like that was, they made me a really good offer in terms of obviously it's a great school to play Division One football in the Ivy League. Um, it just at that time looked like the best opportunity for myself. And, uh, you know, by, whether by chance, by fate, uh, whatever you want to say it was, uh, when Coach Kavanaugh reached out to me, there was just something about it that I was like, you know, I think I need to, I need to answer this call. Um, and then, you know, uh, our director of football ops, Dino Carruccio, did an amazing job getting me up here right away because it was, you know, we were working on a tight timeline. And uh, when you're up here, I've said it before, this place is special. Uh, for those people who fall in love with it, they fall in love with it. And that happened to me. Uh, Coach Stevens, Coach Staff, the rest of the offensive staff believed in me. And that's something that really made me feel like this is where I wanted to be. So did you take an official there? I never did. Nope. I had been on unofficial visits in there for camp, uh, but I had never did my official. I was wondering whether you, you know some of their guys from your time as mm -hmm. there. I don't actually know. Uh, from anybody from that but uh, one of my close friends from home plays on the team so we have a little friendly rivalry uh, we train together all the time when we're at home so it's uh it's good to see him go through his career and uh, i'm always following what they're doing what he's doing and who's that uh joel meglick he plays on the offensive line It feels great, but the job's not done. Uh, we have work to do, one more game. We come out, we do our job, we win. That's what we expect to do. That's what we prepare to do. And like I said, I'm excited to see what happens moving forward. Well, you know where I'm going. I, I've got to ask you again about flipping him from Cornell. And what kind of linebacker would he have been? We, I mean, he's just a football player. He's tough, physical. He runs. He's a vicious runner. I mean, he doesn't want to get tackled, and he's throwing people off the pile and everything else. And, yeah, it's a, a great mindset to have in a quarterback. Uh, and for him, I think the opportunity, and we said it was legitimate, to play a couple of guys. You know, he had seen Gerbino, what we were doing there, and uh, we, f we felt that he could throw the ball a little bit as well. And uh, I think he just believed that he was going to get a legitimate shot, which that was my intent as well. And uh, everybody signed on, and he came out, and he's, he loved it. You know, it's, it's nice to hear that, you know, just the impact the, inst the institution and the place has on, on people. So one went away. What, I don't know, it's, it's odd that you have one, one more game. What, what's it going to take? Well, just uh, your preparation. It's nice to hear these guys pretty much echo. You know, it's uh, uh, the team that plays best on game day is the one that has success. You know, I, I say that all the time to the players. Uh, the fun thing is to hear, Marcus, uh, just how much fun the guys are having, how much he, uh, the guys love each other and all that type of thing. And it's, I mean, you see it. It's sincere. Uh, a couple of times tonight, Ryan Block, uh, uh, Connor Davis comes over just after we saw his coach. He says, could, could Ryan kick the, the PAT? No, Ryan's not even warm, but just the unselfishness. Hey, you know, uh, nobody does that. And here he goes. Uh, the guys that was electric on the sideline when we had you know, played most of our bench, and the guys getting in, and they cheer for each other because they work hard together. And it's a uh, yeah, it's a special group of guys, very very unselfish. What's it say about these veterans that that culture you talk about carried through when you didn't play on it an entire season? Well, it's a tremendous credit to them because I, I didn't know, and all, all along I said the culture. That's the thing we can't control. You have an absence. You have two classes that don't know each other. But the old guys kind of embraced and carried along the younger guys. Uh, the juniors were on when everybody else was gone, and they, they, they work with the freshmen, uh, help those guys come along. And, and the coaching staff uh, has done a tremendous job as well, just kind of melding and molding. So it's a, a complete effort across the board. Well, you know, it's a, a lesson. Fortunately, our guys learned it. You can't take anyone lightly, uh, and that uh, you know, it happened to us earlier this year, and it happened to us two years ago. You got to come out and play, and we have the capability of playing very, very well. But we're only as good as we play, not as, as people say. 
and you know, the kids took it to heart. I still, I mean, I worry all week long about, you know, are, are we going to show up? Uh, but we had a pretty good practice week, and, and the guys did. They came out and played. Uh, you sort of lost in the next game a little bit. It was also a huge day for uh, Dale, another great game, 7 for 7, and all the guards the score. It seems like you've been playing better every week. Has it been sort of a concerted effort to reintegrate him back in the offense like that? Yeah, you know, he just kind of, uh, unassuming, and he just makes plays. Uh, you know his completion percentage. I, I don't keep track of that stuff. I don't know what it is, you know, nationally. But he's as good and as accurate a passer, and he throws catchable balls. Uh, just the, the the throw and his great catch by uh, uh, Zach Bear, but just to pop it in, and then there's one down to JJ Jones. There's no room for error, and he's putting it right where it needs to be, and that's. No, uh, yes, I was talking about Dale. Dale. Oh, Chesson. Yeah, I, I, okay, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah Dale, I miss, uh, it's a shame that we missed him for uh, in the better part of the season because he's an explosive runner. He's a tough kid. He's one of the most popular kids in the team. I mean, his personality, I mean, he's always smiling, he's always happy, always upbeat, but, man, he competes. And when you get the ball in his hand, he does not want to go down, and he, he has a speed to run away from people. Yeah, he's dangerous. And, you know, it was just it was nice t t today. You know, he had a bunch of catches, but 10 other guys caught the ball. And just the ability to sprinkle it around, that makes it difficult to defend and lock down, but people have to keep an eye on Dale. What makes Dale different than the other receivers you have on your roster, and what has he kind of opened up in the past? Yeah, he's got uh, kind of an explosive takeoff. Uh, you catch the ball, and all of a sudden there's a spurt in. You know, you know, people take poor pursuit angles. You know, his uh, yards after catch is phenomenal. You know, Paxton Scott does a great job as well, but that makes it so much easier. You know, a five-yard pass turns into a 15 to 20-yard gain, and and he's always a danger if you, know, you catch him and he can take it the distance. So it's uh, people are going to keep an eye on him and then Paxton Scott or uh, Isaac, uh, Isaac Boston uh, are out uh, and about as well. And we've we've got some weapons, and uh, Coach Shula's has done a good job. Kevin Daff with the uh, the offense and kind of mixing and matching, uh, and then the. You know, it's nice to hear a quarterback talk about his offensive line. These guys did a nice job protecting Derek as well. Bring up Paxton. Was, was it kind of just how it played out today that he wasn't as much a part of the offense? Yeah, yeah. And I mean, that happens game to game. You know, somebody catches a bunch, somebody else doesn't catch so much. And, uh, you know, Chesson come back, coming back has opened things up. Because when Chesson wasn't there, some of the other guys were catching more. They're still making catches and making plays, but you spread it around. Who do you, who do you focus on? Yeah, it's, that's a. It's a nice thing to have offensively. How special was it to be able to get a lot of guys playing time tonight, including some seniors in their last game? Yeah, no, it, it was special. I mean, you, you never count on anything, but you really hope, uh, you know, the last time in a, in a green uniform at home uh, to have a chance to go out and, and, and play, not just show up, but actually you know, Max Telemark you know, at the offensive center. You know, Max is four years, never misses anything. He's, you know, one of our best students. He just takes care of his business. Scout team, that's what he's done for four years. And have a chance to go out and play well, snap the ball well. We're moving the ball offensively. Uh, uh, Andrew Paxton, uh, an another guy, R.J. Brandon out at the wide receiver spot. Uh, you know, guys like that that just haven't seen a whole lot of time. Uh, it's kind of neat for them. And the fun thing is to see how their ch their teammates are cheering for them as they go out. Well, a lot of it's experience. Uh, the simple fact that the guys have taken more snaps. Because a lot of those guys were kind of you know, no names way back when, and all you know Shane Cox or uh, uh, Mick Reese or uh, Jalen Mackey, you know, you name name after name. They haven't been back there. We had Nico Mermigus and so forth, but other guys just stepped up. Isaiah uh, Isaiah Johnson really has never played for us, you know, d uh, due to injury. And all of a sudden, there are good players. They've had a chance, and the more they play, the better they play. So you drive down the field the first possession, you plank it off the upright. Yeah. They, they come back. I mean, is there even for a second, like, oh, no, not Cornell yet? Come back. Yeah. yeah, there was a second with me on the sideline. Uh, I, I thought that we did a real good job pushing the ball down the field. And we got a little bit cute. I mean, the ball's on that yard line, and we, you know, play action pass. And, uh, you know, you, you have to do that one again and say, well, eh, let's just try to ease the thing in. Uh, but uh, our guys responded, and our defense went throw three and out, I think, two or three times. And uh, they just, they feed off each other. 
you know, and it's a fun thing to watch and they're really in tune they're on the sideline but they're looking to see what's happening they're watching the video board and and, the, the, and we talk about that you know just feed, feed your teammates and they go out and make some plays and so yeah, both sides were balanced uh, we talk about possession time and really did a great job keeping the ball out of their hands and then you put some points up and then field position we did a real good job with field position uh, most of the night it was nice uh, uh, Cooney Jamal had a couple of return opportunities and put ourselves in, in good field position after you do talk about field position two three of your first four touchdowns I think started two of them started in their territory and the other one is Second play, all of a sudden you're on the 15th. Yeah. Yeah. How important is field position? Oh, critical. I mean, just in terms of your, your play selection and the, the duration that you're on the field, and it's demoralizing to an opponent. So, you know, securing the football, we did another good job of holding on to the ball uh, and you know, not turning it over. And, uh, uh, you know, punting game continues to improve with uh, the Davis Golick. So he had a big one, the biggest one when we needed it the most. Um, and uh, our cover teams, I thought our kickoff coverage team, uh, Danny O'Day does a real good job with that. And we had some leaks last week, and I thought we shorted up. So we keeping them short of the 25, and they had trouble, so they started to fair catch everything. So it all plays together. Tyler had not been for Yeah. Yeah, just, uh, I mean, he's just, he's uncanny. And again, the catchability of his balls. You know, just a nice touch, and he just drops it in. And he is, I mean, so he just, just kind of does his business and say a whole bunch, just kind of takes care of it. Yeah, I'll check it before I go to bed. You know, it's, it's somebody's going to win, somebody's going to lose. And you know, we don't, we, we, our whole thing, and I've said it to our guys, we told, talk to scenarios. The only scenario that matters to us is what we do. Nothing else. We can't control that. We control us. And so, obviously, I told the guys to, hey, enjoy this. And the seniors, uh, I think, are going to have a little dinner tonight uh, together, which is kind of neat. And moms and dads taking pictures. And then the focus is on, on Brown. And Brown has, you know, one of the most uh, productive quarterbacks in the league. And they are not afraid to throw the football. Uh, so, you know, we've got to, you know, enjoy and focus tomorrow until the next one. Cornell's a better team, as you said, than, their, than the score would indicate, than the record would indicate. Coach Archer has been a little bit of a struggle for him, but talk a little bit about what, how their team has come along. You can see today, but. Yeah, they're they're a much better football team. You know, we, we played well t today, but they're, they're solid. You know, across the board in the league, there's no really soft touches. Uh, you know, Columbia is, is a, a, it's the best Columbia team we've played since I've been here. Uh, Penn, I don't know if they, they get nicked up a little bit, but it's solid. So it's in this league on any given Saturday, and it's you know, there's no break. You keep playing. Uh, and, and David's done that with his guys, and they play people tough, and they just haven't gotten through some uh, you know, maturity probably, so turn the ball over, or make or break something. But you know, he's, uh, the quality of their players has improved tremendously. The size, the strength uh, during the course of uh, time he's been there. So it's good for the league and, and I wish him well out there.